United Nations experts, lawmakers and lobbyists have said for years that the flow of illicit minerals has funded war in eastern Congo. But despite a series of initiatives, many claim the effort to halt so-called conflict minerals is backfiring. New legislation will force many US companies, including the likes of Apple and Motorola, to declare if any metals in their products may come from material mined in Congo or any of its neighbours. But the threat of censure has prompted a de facto embargo. Eastern Congo's mining industry has all but collapsed. Mining officials say out-of-work miners may even join armed groups as a result. Only a handful of companies still operate, among them Chinese traders. Congo's government banned this outfit from operation earlier this year over allegations it is sourcing minerals illegally from armed groups that have long destabilized the zone. The company says this material, loaded up for smelting in China before it may become critical parts of laptops, mobile phones and more, is merely the last of its remaining stocks and that it has stopped buying. It denies ever sourcing minerals such as cassiterite, tantalum and wolframite from rebels. But minerals do not appear to be at the heart of the latest conflict, which has seen mutineers from the M23 rebel movement displace half a million people. I'm here on what is no man's land between the National Congolese Army on this side and the M23 rebels on that side. This is the very last advanced position of the FRDC army just behind me on this hill. And we've been seeing a, a stream, a steady stream of displaced people who are creeping back into uh, the rebel area to take food from where their homes used to be and take it back to their camps where they're living as displaced people. And they say that M23 have been beating them and chasing them and taking taxes from them as they make their way back to their camps. The rebels, whom UN experts claim are backed by neighbour Rwanda, do not control any mines. Instead, M23 taxes vehicles, goods and people moving through their zone. Congolese officials and aid workers say that may pinch civilians even more than when rebels used to rely on conflict minerals for income. Neighbouring Rwanda, keen to ensure its own smaller industry is not affected, has introduced a system to trace every single bag of material mined in the country. But because Congo's East has no tagging system of its own, it means companies are unable to source from Congo confidently. This tag here is the difference between this mine operating and being closed down. The people organising the scheme say that you can trace product directly from this mine and this mine alone because it's tagged right at site. The miners I've just watched have brought it up here and it's been tagged in front of me. It then goes on to a processing plant at the top of the hill and then once a week it goes on to the buyers in Kigali. And they say that the chain is so tight that you can guarantee that nothing from Congo or any other mine will ever get into this system. I can't work without a tagging system. If I don't tag my product, I can't sell my product. And if I can't sell my product, it's not worth it for me working it. So yeah, the tagging system is very successful. Without the system, miners in Rwanda say they too would be forced to shut down. But even the organisation that supports tagging in Rwanda says it is not fail-safe and has caught several smugglers. Some of the material may come from Congo. Something may happen. Uh, after hours, but between morning and evening, the opening time and the closing time, we're quite sure that if somebody is on site, then uh, the product will get tagged and uh, well monitored. For now, the goodwill has failed to produce a conflict-free supply chain or stop the conflict. But activists insist that the fact that less money flows to rebel fighters marks significant progress. Katrina Manson, Eastern Congo and Rwanda, Financial Times.